political polemic has not gone away. There are still extremists here, but the peace process has held. And quite happily, you'll be relieved to know we have stopped killing each other. <laughs> kind of a boon, really, isn't it? Um, so the people who would want Ireland to be reunified, they would be called uh, Republicans or Nationalists. And the people who would like to see this part of Ireland remain part of the United <coughs> Kingdom would be called Loyalists, that's loyal to the crown, or Unionists, believing in the union with England. And so our power-sharing government, which has served us so well, uh, the Republican Party and the largest Unionist Party, okay? But that's why quite often they fall out with each other over various things. So to um, add a little more to that, there were over 3,700 people lost their lives throughout that period of time, most of whom were innocent people. They were innocent people who were like you and me, who were caught up in random events uh, and happened to be in the wrong place <coughs> at the wrong time. One of the biggest things about the Troubles, and Sam and I were both brought up during the Troubles, uh, one of the biggest things about the Troubles was there was a random nature to whenever something was going to kick off. So you could have been in a bar or a restaurant or just walking down the street and a bomb could have gone off or you could have been in a bar and somebody decided to come in and spray it with gunfire. And uh, so you would have lost your life and you would have had nothing to do with any of that at all. By and large, most people here, peace-loving people here in Northern Ireland, 3,700 people lost their lives, over 50,000 people were injured. And the reason, of course, it was magnified is because this is such a small country, all right? So that's a brief overview of the Troubles. The Protestant and Catholic thing was kind of an add-on to that. It's primarily about identity, okay? It wasn't really that much about religion. So to, g to give you a further bit of information about that, I myself, I was born nominally as a Protestant, only that I didn't go to Mass, I wasn't a Catholic, but I was brought up in what's called a mixed area. And if you looked at the news reports during those times, you would have never thought there was such a thing as a mixed area. But my friends were Catholics, so I knew that there was no difference between us. It's only when you went into kind of more ghettoized areas that would have displayed flags from either side that you were more likely to encounter people who thought that there was a difference between us. So I was very fortunate that I was brought up in a mixed area. And the reason I tell you that is because lots of people who come here wouldn't even have thought that an area like that would have existed, but there were many of them. And that's why I will point out that during the, during the times of the Troubles, other, these beautiful other areas still existed throughout that time. So we'll move on from the Troubles now. We're, we're leaving Belfast and we're heading deeper into County Down. So it's really easy to remember. It's like up, down, D-O-W-N. So as I said, there are six counties here in Northern Ireland and there's a really easy way to remember them. There's an acronym, okay? So you've, you're all aware of acronyms. Yes. And there's an acronym for everything nowadays, yes. isn't there? And sometimes people don't bother to tell you what the acronym actually stands for, yes. and you're expected to know, like by osmosis. But I'm going to tell you what the acronym is yes. for, for Northern Ireland. So the acronym for the always say, think of me, FAT LAD. Fat Lad, okay, and Fat Lad stands for counties Fermanagh, Armagh, Tyrone, Londonderry, Antrim, and Down. If you're part of the Republican community, you will never refer to Londonderry as Londonderry. You will only call it Derry. You will leave the London out. In which case, the acronym can still rescue you, because instead of it being Fat Lad, it becomes Fat Dad. There you go. Either way, the fat doesn't change. Uh, I don't know if you've uh, encountered the TV comedy Derry Girls, have you? There's a great comedy called Derry Girls. There's three series of it. And you can get it on the streaming services like Netflix, etc. Do watch it. You'll need to watch it with 
Okay. It's from Derry, Stroke London Derry. So Derry, Stroke London Derry, we call it Stroke City because it's referred to as Derry London Derry or Derry Stroke London Derry. So of course, we being natural wits in this country, we call it Stroke City. Um, but this is the adventures of um, four schoolgirls growing up in Derry back in the early 1990s and it's really quite funny um, so if you do get a chance to watch Derry Girls do I think you'll enjoy that our sense of humour here is usually quite biting and quite sarcastic and it's also quite quick and um, so it would be kind of like you know like Fraser yes or friends you know it's, it's, it's really yes. quite fast yes. quite quite biting so that's that's kind of how how we are here and Derry Girls really encapsulates our sense of humor what's this flower on the right the bush sorry I can't hear you what's that flower on the right the big bush white flowers the bush that's you know a, the name? that's a hawthorn, hawthorn isn't it yeah it's hawthorn oh it's beautiful great flower We have a lot in bloom now. Seems like we've just passed a house that had the, like an arbor completely covered with pink blossoms. Yes, that's because it's the summertime. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> So Belfast itself straddles two of our six counties, County Antrim and then County Down. So the city is kind of built over part of both of those counties. One of the things that you will encounter here in County Down today, and one of the things that is characteristic of this particular county, are kind of rolling green hills. They're kind of like uh, elongated half egg shapes, so very rounded. And they were formed, by the way, did the ice rolled over them many, many, many thousands of years ago in the last ice age. And they're, they've got a name, they're called drumlins. So think of the word drum with L-I-N. So you'll see lots of drumlins in County Down today, and they are very particular to this particular county. Very characteristic. We're just driving past the little town of Cumber here. And one of the most famous sons of Cumber would have been a man called Thomas Andrews. And Thomas Andrews was the man who designed the Titanic. And of course he went down with the ship. In the movie, have you all seen the Cameron movie from 1997? Yes. In the movie he's played by the Canadian actor Victor Gerber with a southern accent. <laughs> he wouldn't have spoken with a southern accent. So even though we're a small country, our accents are quite different. So you'll have someone from the Irish Republic who will talk to you like that, or they'll be talking away to you like that. And then you'll have people here in Northern Ireland who speak like me and Sam. And then you'll have people in Northern Ireland who are from Belfast who speak with really broad accent. How you doing? You all right? And then you'll meet people further up the coast. And they'll kind of talk more like this. You know, it'll kind of be more Scottish accent influenced. Um, so it's as different as someone from New York and someone from Texas, okay, in this tiny little place. And if you've all seen that movie, I don't care what anybody says, there was room for him on that. <laughs> and she was going, I'll never let go. <laughs> and then, bye. <laughs> See you, <ya>, Jack. <laughs> so the little town of Cumber is over on your uh, right-hand side here. It's a really pretty little town, by the way. It's got a lovely little square and everything in there. Uh, but you're not going to see that today, but I'm just tempting you with it. So whenever you come back, you can go to Cumber. It's less than 10 miles from Belfast. And we're taking a specific route today, so this is kind of... Um, we're going to see something that isn't on our itinerary, because Sam and I have decided to bring you this way so you can see something that you won't have heard of. It's a little hidden gem in the Ulster countryside, and I'll tell you a bit more about that later on, but we've decided to do this as a little add-on. Nice. Thank you. 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 Th
Thank you. Nandrum Monastic site is about four miles down there. And that's a, a beautiful old, uh, the remains of a beautiful old monastery, which dates from the 7th century. And it also has the oldest tide mill in the entire world, down at, Mona uh, at, at Nandrum. Very, very peaceful place, and it's on the banks of Strangford Loch, which I'll be telling you more about later on. These houses here, these are new build houses, and in fact, one of our drivers today, you might have seen a very handsome Italianate guy as you walked past towards bus number eight, and that would be Fabrizio. And Fabrizio is, is of course, from, he's got a, the name is Fabrizio de Brida, but he's actually from Don Patrick and speaks with a Northern Irish accent, but obviously he's a, from Italian heritage, but he's also a bricklayer, and he, uh, he built two of these houses for around four hundred thousand pounds. That's about half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They've got uh, three bathrooms. They're right outside the very picturesque um, little town of Cumber, and less than ten miles from Belfast. So <coughs> they're beautiful houses. So the people that would be purchasing here, where would they be working, or what so line could, of business would so they be? So they could in? work in a, in a variety of things. I mean, obviously um, they. As long as they've got the money, they could be working in anything. Um, but they're, you know, they're likely to be. It could be somebody who's maybe a, a lawyer. It could be somebody who's a doctor. It could be someone who works in the health service. It could be someone that works has a good job in the civil service. Okay. Or it could be a couple who both have half decent jobs and they're able to buy a house like that. Or they've made money on their previous property. You know, it just goes the way it goes everywhere else in the world. Yes. Um, and they've decided, you know, that they want to move come out of the city and move there or they already live outside the city and want to move slightly closer to the city or just want to live outside Cumber. So a whole variety of people would buy those types of houses. Okay. Stratford Lock, by the way, is over on the left hand side. It's a, it's a little bit uh, unclear today but you will see lots of the loch later on. Notice how I say the word loch. So we spell the word Loch, L-O-U-G-H. Strangford Loch is the largest sea inlet in the entire United Kingdom. And you sailed up Belfast Loch this morning. In the middle of Northern Ireland, you will see, if you look at a map, you'll see there's a great big lake, and that is called Loch Ney, N-E-A-G-H. Everything seems to end in G-H. Um, and that is the largest freshwater lake in all of the United Kingdom. It's 151 square miles. So we've got the largest lake and we've got the largest sea inlet here in Northern Ireland. <coughs> now, as I said, we spell the word loch, L-O-U-G-H. And the Scottish also use the word loch, but they spell it L-O-C-H. You've probably heard of Loch Ness and the monster. So the reason that the Scottish spell it L-O-C-H is because the Scottish cannot spell. <laughs> so just give you a brief rundown of our itinerary today, okay? And I'll give you timings as well, so whenever we're at each one of these places, I'll give you a timing that we're going to leave the place. So please do adhere to that. You, are, you guys have all been on these types of tours before. But enable for the, to enable the tour to run correctly and for us to get to, to the right places at the right time and be able to enjoy the time, the short time that we have there, it's essential that everybody gets back on the coach whenever I tell them to, okay? So I'm going to be like the big strict person. I'm only emphasizing this again today because yesterday we had a bit of a problem with that and we, we, we at one of the places we were supposed to spend a bit of time at, we could only spend five minutes because two people in particular were very late and kept holding the tour up. So I don't want that happening today, all right? Okay. And I'm going to treat you almost as if you are adults. Um, so what's going to happen today is you're going to go to the uh, St. Patrick's Centre in Don Patrick. Now that is the largest centre dedicated to St. Patrick anywhere in the world. It's got a terrific gift shop in it, but do be aware 
that sometimes there's a, a bit of a line at, a, in the gift shop. They usually maybe only have one person serving. Um, so just make sure that you know you give yourself enough time if you're going to make some purchases there. It's not too overpriced or anything. It's quite a good gift shop. In fact, I think it's one of the best gift shops in Northern Ireland, personally. Um, you're going to go to the St. Patrick Centre, then directly behind the St. Patrick Centre is Down Cathedral. But don't walk up to it. We're going to take you up to it in the at the St. Patrick Centre. Then you'll get back on the coach and we'll, there'll be an arduous drive of five minutes up to the cathedral. There you will get uh, a little talk about St. Patrick. You'll also, in the St. Patrick Visitor Centre, you'll get a little video presentation that lasts about 12 minutes. So you'll get a video presentation, then you get a little talk about St. Patrick, etc., up in the cathedral. And right outside the cathedral is where St. Patrick is buried. And then we will be going to Saul Church, S-A-U-L. And that's a replica of St. Patrick's first ever church that he formed here, founded here in 432 AD when he arrived almost 1600 years ago. After that, we're going to go to the very, very pretty village of Strangford and you're going to have your lunch. Then you're going to go on the ferry boat across Strangford Loch. It's around seven minutes journey, okay? And we're going to go to a little place called Porta Ferry. Then we'll be continuing on down the Arts Peninsula at the St. Patrick Centre. Then you'll get back on the coach and we'll, there'll be an arduous drive of five minutes up to the cathedral. There you will get uh, a little talk about St. Patrick. You'll also, in the St. Patrick Visitor Centre, you'll get a little video presentation that lasts about 12 minutes. So you'll get a video presentation, then you get a little talk about St. Patrick, etc., up in the cathedral. And right outside the cathedral is where St. Patrick is buried. And then we will be going to Saul Church, S-A-U-L. And that's a replica of St. Patrick's first ever church that he formed here, founded here in 432 AD when he arrived almost 1600 years ago. After that, we're going to go to the very pretty village of Strangford and you're going to have your lunch. Then you're going to go on the ferry boat across Strangford Loch. It's around seven minutes journey, okay? And we're going to go to a little place called Porta Ferry. Then we'll be continuing on down the Arts Peninsula. <coughs> make a photo stop at Grey Abbey. And then we'll make our way back to Belfast. So that's what the itinerary is today. So I'm going to say this once and I will repeat this. At the cathedral, which is our second stop, when you go to St. Patrick's grave and have a look at that, the ground is very, very uneven, okay? So if you've got any sort of mobility difficulties or whatever, be extremely careful there. Now that makes it sound like it's the Amazon. It's not. It's just the pavement is a little bit uneven. So just be very careful there because I did this tour about two weeks ago. There was two groups of us and then the other group, somebody fell there and she, she cut herself quite badly. And one of our tour guides fell there last year. What? And she really did herself a lot of damage. She broke, what did she break? She broke her ribs and leg. She broke her rib and her leg. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and that was all at the grave. So just be very, very careful there, okay? Because I can't keep my eyes on everyone at all times. So just be very, very careful, okay? Now, you'll be relieved to know that I'm going to be quiet for a bit because I have to make some uh, phone calls here just to make sure that everyone's aware that we're going to be arriving.
should be there for 9.45, shouldn't it? Should be there for It's not the kitchen, no, the restaurant's right. Yes, hello. Sean, my name is Richard Moore, and I'm a tour guide for excursions on it, and we 